This is Code.org, and we're going to investigate and modify something, I guess. Mm, let's see. Run the program to observe what it does. Yes. Hitting run. Running the program. Ooh, what did it do? Oh, we get to input stuff? Hello. What do you want to modify? One for size, two for price, three, zero to quit. Okay. Mm, size. Uh, can I put in anything? Small. Uh, price. Um, this is a really fancy shirt. It's 879 that, that many dollars. Oop, no comma, no comma, no. Oh, wait, eight, uh, sure. Okay, enter. Uh, zero to quit. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it looks like it allows for user input, and it's changing the values of wherever these variables are. Yep, these instant variables based on our input. What happens? Does this make sense? I mean, I think so, because I know we created set and get methods. Well, we saw set and get methods. Let's see. Get size. Get price. Let's go over to close. Wait a minute. Where does it set them? Oh, way down here. Show options. Oh, yep. Modify clothing. So in my clothing, where's modify? Modify clothing. Oh, and this is where we allow for input. And what do we do? Wall, it's not choice zero. So that's an infinite loop. Interesting. Uh, but it's not infinite because user input will change it. This is a common pattern. We ask for them to, we ask the user if they would like to adjust either of these. And then we use the set method, our setter methods to change the values. Okay. In the close, change the set price to check if the new price is a valid number. If the new price is greater than blah, 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 or 0, 0.0, I don't know what I said, update it. Oh, interesting. Oh, good. They even give us an example. That's super handy. So set, I'm going to shrink this guy down. Set price. And they're asking us to do an if. So if, and then what, what are we checking? Uh, new price, which is right here, this value. If it is larger than zero... Apparently, stuff can't be free. Zoop. And, uh, okay. And then I'm just going to grab this guy. Let's see if I can just move it. I can. I'll move that line up there. Make sure all the formatting is good. So as long as it's that, we can set it. The modify close method in closing.java uses scanner class to obtain an input. Yep, and we've seen that before. This is what they're talking about. System in means we're just storing it. Uh, kind of live, not within a file. You could put other stuff here if you wanted it, uh, the input to go to a file. The modify close method uses the scanner class to obtain input from the user. And what they're saying here, guys, is input and then show options, int choice, input, next int. So when I enter something, input is what the computer is using to understand how to get my info. So next int, okay, whatever's entered, whatever I type in the keyboard, grab the next integer, the next whole number, and slap it into this choice variable. Choice is going to be equal to that input. And then you can see next line, which would be for possibly this string of size, things like this. Uh, and it uses the show, op <laughs> the show options method to show the available options to the user. Run the program and enter a value that is not one of the choices. Okay, let's throw in a three. We're getting feisty here. Three. Oh, it just ignores me. Don't ignore me. Um, as a teacher, I'm very used to this. Just kidding. Everyone always listens to me. That's also a lie. All right. Um, what could you add to modify close method to tell the user their choice was invalid? Try adding an if statement at the beginning of the while loop. So right here. And notice that we have this if, if it's one, this if, if it's two. At the beginning of the while loop, to check if the choice is greater than three, print a message that their last choice was invalid, if true. So they're asking it for at the beginning. So I'm going to go to line 79. I'll hit enter. And I need an if. So if, and it looks like choice is where the value is getting stored for the option that they choose. So choice. And they want is greater than two, which makes sense, right? Because one and two are fine. Zero is quit. Let me go space and curly bracket, enter. So if it is greater than two, what are they asking for me to do? Print a message. So I'll do the system.out.println and ln. So it prints on a new line. And I 
I don't know. It looks like we get to make it up. You can probably say this in a better way, students. The choice is invalid or just invalid choice, I could say. Something like that. The choice is invalid. And let's hit run. I, if I want to get fancy, I could even do an else here because there's no reason to check this other stuff if we know right here the choice is invalid. But let's leave it like this for now. Okay, and I'm going to do a five. The choice is invalid. What do you want to modify? Cool. And just to show you another way to do this and be 100% correct would be to throw the else right here because there's absolutely no reason now to ask the computer to double check if choice was a one or a two since we already know it is greater than two. So I could go ahead and do something like this. Either way is technically correct. I would call this a bit cleaner. Yep. And so this would also work just fine. Ah, onward.